to the original, there's a huge school for biblical translation in France. Martin Luther, of course, translated the New Testament into German. And Luther did it as a scholar as well, uh, going back to multiple sources. The other thing I really love about Erasmus's um, the, the visual book, I love the decoration of it. I mean, this is, this is again, it's a, it's a very artistic style. He's got lots of art in there. It's beautiful. It has ornamental large letters. And this adds to the tradition of what makes a really classy, fancy, good Bible. Um, Erasmus was extraordinarily influential. I can't say it enough. And, and, and probably not only because of his interests, his movement within humanist circles, um, but he became one of the great disputers with Martin Luther. And he and Luther actually got into a major debate about key tenets of Reformation theology. And I actually, my great book students last year read the, the, the debate between Luther and um, Erasmus. And they end up feeling very sorry for Erasmus because he was so nice and Luther was so strident. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an interesting book. but. But the fact is that he comes in then to the mainstream. We have print now. He comes into the mainstream because people all over Europe are seeing these debates and learning of these debates. So what used to be take place at a cathedral or in a monastery is now out there for everybody to consider and to think about. And many people are surprised that, that Erasmus actually didn't break with the Roman church, and he didn't. And that was where he just, he felt that Luther was being too dogmatic and he didn't want the break. Even so, he had an enormous uh, uh, impact on, on other translators and other reformers. And probably the most important of these was a man named William Tyndall, and uh, the provost talked about him last week. Um, Tyndall was born in 1494 and died in 1536. And Tyndall is, he is really the person who did some of the finest early biblical translation into English. He was inspired. He, he first worked with Erasmus's Greek New Testament which, by the way, Erasmus called it his Novum Organum. I mean, he didn't even call it a New Testament. He just sort of the, the new thing to transform the world. So he had a sort of a, a vision in what he was trying to do. Um, but uh, Tyndall saw what Erasmus had done with, the, with his New Testament, which, by the way, I should stop. I didn't mention it is in quarter format, so it's accessible. It's easy to carry. Um, Tyndall is, is, decides right away that he wants to go ahead and work on an English, an, an English version of Erasmus's Greek New Testament. So here's where Tyndall's changing from, from, from the earlier people. He's not going to the Vulgate, he's going to Erasmus. And he does a direct translation into English. He thought he'd get support from Henry VIII. Um, there was some, you know, some stirrings in, the, in London that they were interested in translation and reform, and he just basically got said, "No, we're not. We're not interested." And the real reason they weren't interested was not so much the Bible he was producing, but he was a Lutheran, and they didn't like Lutherans. Henry might tolerate some some looking at reform, but he did not like Lutherans. So, so Tyndall went to the continent, and he began actually getting his his own translation. Um, his English translation printed, and the first sets of them were confiscated. He was forced to leave the site where he was printed. He finally took what he had printed and found another printer in another place in Germany. I mean, he was under scrutiny all the time. Uh, he ultimately fled to, to Worms, uh, which was uh, the same city where Martin Luther was tried, so it's just interesting. There was more toleration there in that part of the Holy Roman Empire. And the printing was completed in, in, 16, in 1526.